Good morning, everybody. Welcome to NYNJPA Weather, your weather source for the northern Atlantic. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino, and first and foremost, happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. And if you are single, buy yourself some chocolate. What the heck, right? So let's take a look at this upcoming forecast. Here's the current surface map as of 9 a.m. And uh, basically, we're setting up for a very warm yet windy Valentine's Day. Uh, but this low pressure system over the St. Lawrence River Valley, notice how, how, how tight the pressure gradient is. Basically the lines of pressure. The tighter they are, the stronger the winds. The good news is we are on the warm side of this low pressure system. So temperatures are going to skyrocket into the 50s, along with some windy conditions. Winds anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour, approaching 30 miles per hour along the coast with wind gusts over 40 miles per hour. Now if you're in New York City or in Philadelphia in between those buildings watch out for these wind gusts because as they're moving through these buildings the winds could exceed 50 miles per hour very easily because kinda of like taking water through a hose. You put a little pressure on that hose the water comes out even faster. Same idea with these winds so be careful out there with these uh, winds especially in and around uh, the urban locations. Otherwise, generally dry conditions are expected today. There isn't really much in the way of moisture ahead of this cold front. Behind this cold front, drastically colder temperatures. Let's take a look at the latest European model guides from the Penn State E-Wall, and you will see that by tonight, much colder air will be moving into the northern Mid-Atlantic. This is the 850 millibar uh, temperatures, and you can see that they fall well below normal. Uh, below zero should I say and as a result much colder air comes into the region Today you could see temperatures in the mid 50s by tonight temperatures will be falling into the 20s to upper teens In fact by uh, tomorrow morning over New York City temperatures could be around 25 degrees So we go from 55 to 25 that's a 30 degree drop so just be prepared Combine that with the strong winds at the surface and you could see a rather um chilly morning tomorrow morning with wind chills in the teens and 20s. Now this is 500 millibars for tonight. Now, notice the large ridge that's building over the plains. That ridge is going to slide east over the next couple of days and with it some very warm conditions. We look at the next couple of days going towards Thursday night and you can see a drastic change in the 500 millibar pattern. First let's go out to the Pacific because this is important. Notice this ridge that's in the Gulf of Alaska. This is called a, called a positive EPO pattern. And what that basically means is that all the, the, there's a huge trough in the west. All the cold air is focused into the west coast and into the Rockies. And a nice large ridge develops over the east. Now this ridge is going to provide some very warm conditions. By Friday, temperatures are going to be in the lower 60s. It's going to feel spring-like. You're going to be ready for spring training baseball and going outside for a run. Don't get used to those warm temperatures for too much longer though unfortunately because a drastic change again is going to happen by the weekend. But for now, throughout this rest of this week, it's going to be beautiful. Temperatures are going to moderate and even more importantly, let's take a look at the mid-levels. Here's 700 millibars. Notice all these oranges. That's dry air. So really, not only is it going to be warm, it's going to be very dry. You cannot have precipitation with a uh, 700 millibar layer with 30 percent humidity that's some very dry air so that means that uh, we're going to be warm I mean a little windy but we're going to be dry so it's going to be a perfect preview to spring we're not in spring pattern yet but it's a nice preview to what we can expect as we move forward into spring and at 850 millibars we can clearly see all of our cold air is locked up in Canada spilling back into the northern plains in the uh, eastern Rockies but there's that's where all our Arctic air remains warm air just infiltrates the entire east coast with temperatures at 850 millibars anywhere from about four to eight uh, degrees Celsius which basically supports temperatures in the 50s and 60s by the end of the week so all this snow that's on the ground if you have any left will be gone and uh, some very nice weather conditions certainly can be expected and at the surface high pressure will be in control setting up originally over the eastern gulf coast and then it'll slide off the east coast through the week the closest low pressure systems all the way out in the plains with a powerful arctic cold front that's going to create a lot of problems coming up for this weekend 
But for the rest of the week, it's going to be dry, quiet, and warming up. By, Saturday, by Sunday night, there is a huge change in the 500 millibar pattern. Remember what I had discussed earlier with a positive EPO pattern? Well, by this weekend, we move into a negative EPO pattern, where a ridge is developing more over the Gulf of Alaska and a trough is developing around the Aleutians. This produces a upper-level wind flow that originates from the Arctic, drops down towards the northern plains, and then shoots out towards the mid-Atlantic. Now, there are a couple of key features here to point out. One, we still have a trough over the west, with a southeast ridge trying to establish itself. This is lingering of the La Nina influence in the pattern. But we also have a very powerful polar vortex sitting up over the Hudson Bay, and another deep upper level low trying to set up over the uh, Canadian Maritimes. This is a negative NAO, negative Arctic Oscillation type pattern, which means that cold air will be in play in this type of pattern. But unlike the earlier patterns from this winter, they will not have as strong of a dominant influence as what we saw earlier on in January. So that produces a little bit of a different setup to the cold and stormy pattern that will evolve for the end of this month through early March. However, for the second half of this weekend into early next week, what we need to focus on is, is exactly where this Arctic cold front stalls out. Notice the thermal gradient here. This very tightly packed uh, isotherms, which basically means that to the south of this Arctic cold front, temperatures are warm. Temperatures are in the 40s, 50s, 60s. To the north of this Arctic cold front, 20s and 30s. Possibly even some teens over parts of the uh, northern Great Lakes and northern uh, plains. So you can see that we're dealing with two dynamically different uh, air masses in play here, and that's going to create the potential for storms. When you have this type of tight thermal gradient, you're going to get some precipitation, you're going to get some storms. Whether they're strong or weak is still very much in question. However, the point that I want to make is that the exact position of this article front and the exact position of upper level features setting up at 500 millibars is going to play a huge role in exactly what type of weather pattern we're going to see going into early next week. There is some suggestion that Sunday and Monday could feature some snow over much of the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan area. However, if this ridge is slightly stronger or the upper level low is a little bit weaker, then this whole thermal gradient gets pushed up further north which means rain and yeah, not too bad of a weekend, temperatures in the 40s and 50s. So clearly we are dealing with a very dynamic and volatile forecast going forward towards the second half of next weekend into early next week, but we are clearly dealing with an Arctic air mass that is going to try to attempt to move into the northern mid-Atlantic. At the surface you can clearly see we have a strong Arctic high pressure system sitting up over Ontario and heading towards the St. Lawrence River Valley. We have an area of low pressure developing around the Rio Grande with a warm front or stationary front moving through uh, the Mississippi River Valley towards the Mid-Atlantic coast. Again, where this stationary front slash Arctic cold front sets up will determine a great deal about the type of precipitation we see this weekend and the exact temperatures. Uh, a lot of the mild guidance is a little bit warmer, pushing this Arctic boundary further north. And as a result, we end up with mostly just some scattered showers and warm temperatures. Whereas the European guidance is a little bit more aggressive here, and it's something that we're going to need to watch very carefully. But we are clearly heading towards a more volatile weather pattern. So consider this as a nice break uh, starting on Wednesday on through Friday with very warm spring-like temperatures. So I'll keep an eye on this clearly volatile weather pattern moving forward. Thank you for using NYNJPA Weather as your weather source for the northern Mid-Atlantic. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. Have an excellent day.